and welcome to episode 121 of the Torpreneur podcast. We have the second in our series of Meet the ResTech. Today, I'm excited to introduce Oscar Bruning, who is the CTO and founder of Peak. Welcome to Torpreneur, Oscar. Thank you. Welcome. Be excited to be here. Fantastic. Also, welcome to Michelle Moore of Miami Tour Company. How are you, Michelle? Good. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. And welcome back to Emily of Ciclo Services in Quebec, our shopper today. How are you, Emily? Very good. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here again. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I know we're all polite people here, but what I wanted to say is because this is online and it's virtual, as we go through this conversation, don't wait for me to bring you in. If you have a point to make, by all means, just jump in um, so we can have an authentic conversation. Let's start off with, with you, Oscar. Briefly tell us about Peak. How did it get started, for instance? How long have you been okay. around? So... Um... I'll give a little bit of, so my background, so I'm the CTO and co-founder, so I run all of product um, and um, um, I'm originally from Germany just to help you pinpoint that accent because that's going to keep people guessing. Um, we've been around since 2012, uh, so about eight years. Um, and um, Peak Pro is a full featured reservation software, basically a full product suite for operators. Um, and it, it does all the same things that most best tech systems do, right? Like you have online bookings and you have the back office management of those bookings. I think where we are sort of a little bit bigger and broader is a lot of the um, additional tools that we provide. So for example, point of sale, walk up, um, sort of management tools. So we have native mobile apps and other things that you can actually use for your staff that are very different from the back office tools. They're much easier to use. Um, and then we have a big focus on marketing because in the end, the, we think about the, our operation, uh, our ResTech system, not just as a, hey, we want to help you streamline your business, but that, that's sort of the baseline. Yes, you need to run your business better, but you really want to make more money, right? You want to start focusing on how do I then help attract more customers, how to help them have a better experience while they're here. Uh, and so that's where a big uh, part of our focus is on. Absolutely. And, and when did you start? When we found it, 2012. 2012. 2012, yeah. Michelle, share a little bit more with us about Miami Tour Company. Sure. Um, we started uh, we started as just an OTA with Miami Beach 411 Corporation. And then we um, decided to buy buses in 2008 and start our own tour company. And all this time, we've had a developer um, on full time um, managing our, we used to just work with um, XCAR and we would customize it to uh, take all of our reservations. And so we paid our developer almost $80,000 a year and it still wasn't perfect. And the reason why we did that is because we started in 2002. So really wow. there wasn't booking software back then. Um, so we go to the different conferences and we think, oh, you know, let's look to see what people have to offer, but it was never up to speed. And then um, two years ago, I had just been continuing to get calls from Fair Harbor actually. And I thought, well, they look like they really have uh, more things now to offer. And so we actually broke away from working with our developer to move to Fair Harbor. And that was um, a great move for us because we were able to um, get confidence in order to trust a booking a software company, um, but it was a disaster. And so we quickly uh, were looking, we were looking for something else. And we realized that Eric Schmidt had invested in Peak and we love everything about Google. Um, we're big fans and we've been to Google a couple times. Um, so we were like, well, let's just give it a, give it a try. And we, uh, spoke with Jana and we were just sold immediately. The features were just far beyond what we expected. And so we've been with Peak now for um, a year, a year last month. Great, and we uh, should give a shout out to Jana Ray because she's very active on, on the Facebook groups and she's very active in our community. And what I like about Jana, she's not pushy. She's not pushing Peak Pro. She's actually trying to find out what the kinks are in people's systems and trying to evaluate 
if it's something Pete can overcome. So I always enjoy her contributions online. She's uh, deserves a pay rise, I think, Oscar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you you were talking, Michelle, about you'd moved from having an in-house developer to Fair Harbor because they had extra stuff at that stage. What kind of extra stuff did they have that made you give up on your own in-house developer to move to a, a booking platform? What was missing previously? Sure. Um, just really, um, our reporting was almost non-existent. And by the way, we've been with Peak for two years. Two years. Okay. I knew it sounded a year yeah, sounded like too short. Listen, this <laughs> year seems like five years. Let's be honest. Oh my God. I think we just skipped a year. Um, so really just a lot of um, the reporting features were just not there. And I felt like when I wanted to run a report to generate um, a check to give somebody commission or to generate an invoice, it just wasn't it wasn't easy to do. I, I it took way too long, and the bigger we got, the longer it took. It's just like seeing that little wheel just spinning, waiting for the reports to to generate. And um, so it seemed like like that was going to be an, an easier thing. Mm -hmm. And how did you discover Peak? Gus, uh, my husband and my partner, he was reading um, something about Eric Schmidt and, and heard that he had, right. he had invested in Peak. And he said, wow, let's check this out. And it just seemed like just reading about it was just more than what what it just seemed like it was a it was a good thing to check out and we were sold immediately it just um it really really had everything that we needed sure emily you're you're shopping for a booking platform so you're evaluating evaluating everybody and we're very fortunate to have a cto here of peak what questions do you have for oscar well, in fact, um, it's, I'm really curious about the POS uh, part, you know, uh, the booking platform is, of course, our main uh, need, but I'm really curious about the, the POS function. So if you could tell us a little bit more about that, I would be curious. Yeah. Um, so this came out of the realization that we have a lot of operators who have both online tours, but then they also have a gift shop and they have sort of like other things they would like to sell. And it's sort of weird when your customer comes up, walks up and says like, hey, I want to book a tour, but I also want to book by this mug and t-shirt. And now you have to like process them in two different systems. And we've always invested into our mobile apps, which are meant for your staff. So they're very easy to use. They're very different from the back office tools there, you know, so that you can hire young people who can just like, you know, you don't have to train them up. And so we looked at point of sale system like Square and Clover and some of those, but then adapted it to the industry. So what that, the difference really with Clover and Square is they have, they track inventory in the way of how many cups of coffees did I sell? Um, we basically integrated that into the tour. So when you walk up, for example, it shows you here are the tour. It basically looks like a Square, right? Like you have these big buttons, make it very easy to book them uh, or to buy stuff. But then you also have the, each, you can configure those dashboards to have the tours and it shows you what the tours are. It directly integrates into how much seats you have, many seats you have left when it automatically picks the next tour. So assuming the customer is right in front of you. So if you basically, if you have a tour at 12 and it's 1130 and you say like, hey, I want to book that tour, it'll book that, it'll, it'll book that tour. But then at, we have a buffer like at 1210 or something, it switches automatically to the next time to the one o'clock tour. Right, so it's really, again, it's really easy uh, for, meant for walk up, right? Making it very, very easy. And then it integrates with um, contactless payments. So uh, you, can, you can accept credit cards, it connects to cash drawers, uh, you can do Apple and Android pay. So it's really meant as a full uh, standalone, well, not standalone, but, but a full uh, point of sale system for you. So it's connected to your booking platform that is online? Correct. So you configure everything through the booking platform, but then you can now accept bookings both online and on the point of sale, and they tap into the same inventory. Um, and so give you warnings if you're overbooking a tour and you say like, hey, we only accept 14 people on the tour, or I can squeeze somebody in and you can, you can do all of those things. Okay. 
Michelle, in terms of running Miami Tour Company, I, I, let me ask you, how many guided tours do you offer, actually? Well, we have usually um, three buses on the road every day in general. Um, and then say there's one, to, one bus tour that's doing the Miami tour and then another bus tour that's doing the Everglades. And then there's combinations going on within those specific tours. So the Miami tour driver will do like Miami to the max, Miami to the max plus Everglades, Miami plus boat cruise, triple crown. So there's different, um, maybe five different tours that people are doing in one bus. It's just, they're going, some of them are staying on the bus. Some of them are going to a boat after, some are going to the Everglades. And what's nice is with Peak, we can schedule like um, bus number A or bus A is doing all the Miami tours and bus B is doing all the Everglades tours. And we only have like say a 40 passenger bus. So we're able to take all of the, um, all of the availability and spread it out over those tours. And I don't mean like putting like 10 people from the Miami tour and then 10 people from the Miami to the max plus boat. I mean that their system allows you to just say, I can take 40 people across all those tours and it will block it out when, um, when you reach the, the maximum, which is great. Yeah. What are some of the other features that you, that peak offer that are essential for you in the efficient running of your business? Um, first of all, because we developed our, our own for so long, um, being able to understand how to do things myself has always been of the utmost importance. If I want to add my own promo code, I want to be able to do it right then and there. I don't want to have to wait to send an email to support and ask for something like that. So um, what is important to me is to be able to do as much as I can by myself and that it's easy for me to do. And I find that with Peak, everything is very self-explanatory. Um, and if I do have a problem, I can just quickly pick up the phone or send an email. And I like that they're there um, very quickly for me. Another uh, hurdle that we had was choosing pickup locations. And that's been very easy. Um, people can choose their own pickup locations on our website um, using the Google integrated maps, which is great. Um, also, the driver's manifest where the drivers pick up at different hotels. That's been so great for uh, us to have because we just uh, export it to an Excel spreadsheet and it basically comes out as a driver manifest. That was a customization, but it's worked beautifully for us. Um, but some other things that have been really important to us is the auto review functionality it's hard to just sit there and manually ask for reviews. I mean, you know, you have to have somebody sending emails and Peak automatically, uh, it automatically does it for you. And you can say, oh, I want it. I want to send an email asking how their tour was while they're on the tour or an hour later or the next day, you can just cut, say when. Um, and that's been huge for us and, and has gotten us a lot of great reviews very quickly. Um, Another really important thing is being able to give your concierges at the hotels access to be able to book the tours themselves online and see the availability, the real-time availability. And that's all possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you, you're addressing these because I find it very difficult not being a tour operator myself that, you know, I read the article that came out on arrival last week, which was basically comparing and contrasting different pricing between, you know, there's 160 booking platforms out there at the last count. But for me, this is so much more than just pricing. Yes, pricing is important, don't get me wrong, but there are things like you're talking about here with manifests and real-time booking for concierges and the auto review program. This is why I wanted to produce Meet the Res Tech because it's not just a case of, oh, those guys are cheaper, I'm going to go and use them. It's what extra bells and whistles do, for instance, in this case, peak offer that help you run your business. Um, Oscar, I got a couple of quick round questions here. Uh, for you. And first one is, can I manage my business with peak 
on my smartphone or tablet when I'm out of the office? Yes, 100%. We have native apps. And I want to highlight, we actually have an offline mode because a lot of operators are on the beach or somewhere where they don't necessarily, necessarily have connectivity. And so all your data is automatically on the phone and you can continue to run your business and make changes. And then when it has connectivity, it synchronizes with the backend again. Yeah. Um, can I improve my website or build a new one with Peak? We do offer, so we have two stages. So we do offer helping, uh, we offer basic websites. Um, we have a number of templates that are SEO optimized and they work well with Peak. Um, we also have partnerships with more professional marketing agencies that both uh, work a lot with two operators. So they know how to build website for two operators, but they also know Peak very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can help uh, basically build a more advanced, customizable uh, website for you. Sure. And then uh, just to, to wrap that up, this section up for now is, what distributional channels do you offer? Um, so from OTAs, um, we work with sort of all the, the big ones, um, TripAdvisor, Viator, Get Your Guide, Expedia. Um, we also have integrations with Yelp and Groupon. We work with Google. We were their first partner to, uh, we helped them build it initially. Um, I think those are, and then there's a number of smaller ones that are coming up, um, mm -hmm. whether that's sort of like half people, but those are the big ones. And uh, here's a quick uh, round question from me, actually. Did you read the article from Alec Bainbridge saying that res systems are obsolete or will be obsolete? I did not. When Was it older <laughs> article? It just came out today. That's why I, I did not. To ask I have not. Okay. Seen that yet. Well, I'm sure you're going to disagree with it. <laughs> really do I. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We will save that for another day. Then. Okay. Another day. Let, let's talk about payment because it is important. Um. How, oh, actually, Emily, do you have a question before I go into this? Yes. Exactly. Go for uh, it. Well, I have. I have two questions. Go for it. Uh, first of all, uh, on what model of payment you're working on? Uh, like, like you said, there's no importance on how. You do it, I, I'm just curious. And at the same time, I know the, the quality of the service comes with it. But also I would like to know about the refunds, um, how it is easy to refund a customer anytime. So yeah. my two questions. So payments is, uh, which is now pretty much because become industry standard, we charge a fee to your customers for the online bookings. Um, and usually you can choose to absorb that or you can choose it onto the customer. Most operators choose to pass it on. Um, it's sort of like always a point of contention. Um, people bring it up for me personally, if I can make a plug on why I think it's really important is I love this payment processing or the, this fee model because it aligns our interest with yours. If you are not, if you are not getting bookings, we're not making money, right? Like, so we are, and I actually have an engineering team that's optimizing the online booking flow on a regular basis. And we do a B testing and we continuously try to make improvements because we're incentivized to help you maximize what you're getting in terms of bookings. Um, the second piece uh, around refunds, it's a one click and the refunds trigger through. So all of that is automatic. I think Michelle can sort of probably be the testament for that one, but it's, it's oh, very easy. quick. And so easy, even if you change, like say you um, have a more expensive tour and they want to downgrade to something else, um, Peak will ask you, do you want to update the price? And you can, and it will automatically refund them the difference. And I just want to also say um, that since we started working with Peak, our, our um, online sales increased by 30%. So wow. this is not like a joke about Peak being better and optimizing. Like it's it's for real. And the abandoned bookings, uh, you know, it's just like amazing that they capture abandoned bookings. Um, I. I got an email with the statistics and I don't remember exactly, but it was like $20,000 or something in a month or that of abandoned bookings that they captured. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's good. So how does, how does that work exactly, the abandoned bookings? Well, it captures um, the, the email address of the customer. Right. So, and then it will send them an email and say, oh, I think you were, you, you know, you were going to book this um, and you forgot to continue or maybe you just couldn't continue. Um, and it, it just sends them an email and they end up booking. Wow. And it's 
it's meant like it's a it's a good example like our booking flow is actually optimized for that because you have these questions if you run a food tour you're asking for dietary restrictions and things like that those are friction points so the very first thing we do in the booking flow is ask for your name and email address so that we have that so even if you drop off anywhere else in the booking flow we can send you that follow-up email how standard is that amongst booking platforms oscar um i th- I'm only aware of one other company that has this built right. in. Yeah. Um, but I'm not, there might be one or two other ones. It's sure. very, in, it's very standard. We look more, not at other booking systems, but look more at like sort of Amazon and other big companies and what are they doing and how can we bring that into the tours and activities industry? So yeah. That's where a lot of the inspiration is coming from. I have I, a question. I'm even seeing that with eBay as well, Oscar, that I'm getting, <laughs> I'm just searching right. for stuff, but then I'm getting emails from eBay well, saying, hey, this is still available or it's an hour to go. Interesting piece about the abandoned bookings is the way people use it. They come to the website, they start browsing, they start looking at the booking flow, they leave. Now you send the email. It's not that they're like, oh, I wanted to book this. Let me finish it. They use that email like a bookmark in their inbox. And then a week later, when they're closer to their decision point, they come back and they're like, oh, I was going to book this. What should I do? Oh, it's in my inbox. Let me just finish this booking. Nice. And that's sort of why it's so powerful. Emily? Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm curious about the, the multi-language um, functionality. Do you have a way of uh, managing uh, different languages? Yes. So our booking flow has been... Uh, so, so we don't do automatic translation, we do manual translation. So we have manual translation, I think in 10 language or 12 languages now, that, and you can basically select and that way, we wanted to make sure that it's not confusing, right? Like it has to be really good, clear instructions and very, uh, very clear language. So we had native speaker translate every part of the, the booking flow. Um, and then you can customize obviously your emails and, and your, uh, your inventory can be uh, you can present in that language. So, for example, if my website is in French, will the booking platform appear in, Fr- in French or in English first? In, uh, so it depends on which button. It, it dep- however you want it. If you want it to show <laughs> up in French first, then you can show it up to You can set it up so it shows up in French. Okay, perfect. Michelle, I, I'm still amazed at you saying that your bookings went up by 30% uh, when you switched to peak. What are you attributing that to other than the abandoned bookings? Um, the amount of, t- um, obviously, um, well, my husband is the one who actually really looks at this, but it's the amount of pages that you click through and just the ease of booking um, and also what it looks like, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's not two columns. It's very user-friendly. It's very user-friendly on uh, mobile. And that's where, you know, majority of the bookings come from. Um, it's just, there's a calendar. I was looking at somebody's website the other day and it was, um, you know, it was very, it wasn't dynamic. It was very like you could choose, um, choose a date in the past and, I just thought as a customer, I wouldn't want to book something that didn't look like it was real time availability going on. And you can really use that with peak. Uh, you can see that it's, it's real time. Mm-hmm. Um, you can just tell that they've worked hard to make sure that it converts. And, you know, my husband spent 18 years trying to figure that out with our developer and they got it the best they could and it worked great we thought it was awesome but yeah it, <laughs> it could have been I mean, so much 18, better. 18 years at eighty thousand a year and i'm yeah. sure with inflation it was low we should have had our own we should have had our own computing system <laughs> but i mean this is this is the thing about working with a booking platform whatever that fee is or the subscription model compared with building something in-house and as you have said today, and I'm really glad it's coming from you as a customer rather than as a salesperson. It's like you, you've increased your online bookings by 30%. You now have this abandoned cart facility that you didn't have before for, is it 6% booking fee, Oscar, with Peak? Yeah. Yeah. And then I, um, I was also told that if we wanted to pass the 
credit card fees onto the customer, we could also do that. Um, we decided not to just because, you know, it's the price of doing business, but it's an interesting thing that's, you know, a possibility through Peak. So. Giving, you, giving you the option. Emily? I think, I think, yeah, flexibility is very important. Uh, I know that some uh, booking platforms only accept that the fee is passed to the customer and others accept that it's both either the company or the customer. And I always prefer flexibility um, when it comes to choosing how we manage our business. So the other question I have, so that's payment. And then of course, the next one is onboarding. What does that onboarding process look like, Oscar, for someone who joins Peak Pro? So we have a dedicated onboarding team. Um, so they will talk to you, kind of try to understand your business. Um, they'll help you get set up the account, maybe already set up the initial framework, just because, especially if you don't come, sort of what, what Michelle was mentioning, right? If you come from your own world um, and some operators are even on pen and paper, right? It's sort of a big change in the way you think about how you run your business. So we help with setting up that account and then we do trainings on that and we have automated, we have help desk articles, we have videos, we have regular webinars. So um, when you join, I think there's an email cadence, you get an email every week with sort of like, hey, here's the thing that you should probably tune next. Um, and then after two weeks, and I think after two months, we do a check-in call where we come in and say like, okay, now that you're comfortable with the system, Let's go back to some of these things that we initially skipped over and help you tweak and, and, and kind of address maybe any friction that you might still have and, and kind of go a little bit more into the details. How was the onboarding process for you, Michelle? Oh, looks like we may have lost Michelle. And two people oh, out to our office for two days and it was amazing. I'm sorry, um, could you repeat that? I, I lost you for a sure, moment. Sure. Um, I, I don't know if it was just, you know, we were, um, we were special or, but they sent two people to our office for two days. Wow. So, um, uh, it was a big build. Um, so it was great. I mean, they were really great people. They really knew what they were doing. Um, we told them everything that we needed and yeah, <laughs> it was great. So as good as you are, Oscar, I think we're going to make it clear here that not everybody gets a two-day visit, correct? That is, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, yeah, not everyone. Um, it depends a little bit. One of the benefits of actually with, with COVID is now that we actually have, we can have more of a distributed team across the U.S. And that's sort of one of the things we're looking at is can we have more people, more time zones in more locations mm. so that it's easier if you had to, you could actually do a stop by it. Um, locally rather than everything sort of being out of a central office and then virtual. Um, so this might actually get easier over time. Um, but yeah, in general, um, just to organizing it and the cost and everything, it's, you know, if you want to get up and running virtual and, and with a lot of like the phone calls and the help desk articles and all these other things, it's usually the faster way to get up and running. Michelle, um, um, oh, go ahead, Emily. Yes, yeah, so I was curious about the private tours. Um, maybe Michelle, you offer some or not, but in yeah. our case, uh, we do accept private tours. And I was curious how um, Peak can help managing private tours, like the demands like on the website, but also sending an invoice or things like that. Yeah, it's really easy. Um, it's it's uh, you add it just like you would um, you'll see that we do have private tours on our website that can be booked directly through Peak. Um, you can send an invoice directly through Peak as well. So um, when people make a reservation or if, when you go in to make the reservation, um, say a client calls like yesterday, I got a call from someone wanting to do a private Key West tour. So I went in and I put his name and uh, he didn't want to pay for it right then. So I put his name, his email, his phone number, and then I put um, the date that he wanted to go um, and then I can just send him an invoice and he can pay that directly through the, through the link that he receives. Very or good. I could have just taken the payment if he wanted to take the payment right then and there. Okay, excellent. And um, if the customer is on your website, can the customer tell you exactly what they want or they choose a private tour, a particular uh, private tour? 
Um, for us, we have our private tours broken down like a different product. Um, so, you know, he would have chose like a, a private QS tour. And then what happens after that is when you're setting up the product, you actually can ask, um, you choose what questions do you want asked from the customer? So maybe you have a private tour and um, you just have something that's generic. You just want to offer a private, a private service and you can ask the customer questions after that if you don't have multiple products set up and you just have it more generic. Okay. Um, and that will guide them through the booking process. And you can either choose to have the questions that you've asked either mandatory or just optional. And do you put the price already on your website or it's a, it's a first, a, um, like a, an inquiry and then the, you can send the invoice. For us, we put them on our website. Um, we've done it both ways. Um, we actually have it both ways on our website. So, um, okay. for like a van, we have private and then for the buses, we have, uh, just generating uh, an inquiry, but Oscar, you'd be able to answer that a little bit better because we don't, um, I just, because that's how we use it. I don't know if that's what the capability is. You can do both. So you can set it up that you're, that it's either you create, for example, private tour packages. And that's actually one of the recommendations we make is that you actually say like, Hey, if you have, because if you have a motivated customer who is like, here's, I know what I want. This package looks great. Let me just book it. You want to get that sale. Mm -hmm. um, but then you can also set it up that, Hey, if I want to collect, it's a little bit more big, might be a larger party for a wedding or some other situation where you say like, Hey, you know, are there any special information or special things we should know about something? How many people are coming? You can also set up peak through it's more of a lead form where people don't pay, but they fill in the information. It creates a booking reservation in the back end. It's not a full booking, but it's a reservation. Then you can basically pick up the phone, call them, customize it, and then you send that link that Michelle was mentioning to them for payment okay. afterwards. Excellent. Thank you. Michelle, you know, we're very fortunate to have Oscar with us on the, this conversation today on this episode of the show. Let me ask you, what is the one feature or function you wish Peak would offer that they don't currently? Well, luckily, I just had this conversation with their design team today. <laughs> um, I can give you two. Um, first one is their catalogs. I wish they were editable um, for the OTAs um, and the resellers. And then um, texting within the platform, texting the customers would be great. What do you mean by catalogs? Um, whenever you have a reseller, you set up a catalog with the pricing. So there's specific pricing, you know, whether it be like a 25% discount. So you set up the catalog. So it's maybe you even, uh, they offer a different retail rate. You can do that. But the retail rate, the, the net rate, what their commission will be. And that way, when you generate the reports and you have to invoice them or send them a check, it, it's all there for you. It's based upon what you set your catalog to be. And um, currently, you need Peak to help you edit the catalog. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I'm the kind of person that likes to do everything myself. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're working yeah, on we're, it. we're tracking those. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. and in our case sorry go ahead no it's okay sorry um, in our case we have bikes uh, to manage so instead of buses it's bikes and um, because we do bike rental and also bike tours of course uh, but let's concentrate on bike tours for the bike tours is there a way of um, associating a, a an equipment or a bike, a specific bike to a certain customer to keep track of which bike uh, the customer used? So yes, short answer is yes. And we actually have a full built out rentals platform as well. So in on top of the activities platform, we actually have a rentals platform that has a lot more functionality, what you're describing, tracking every single bike, um, also allowing different people to come in at different times and, and sort of COVID features where uh, you automatically add 15 minutes of buffer time for cleaning and sanitation and things like that. 
So um, if somebody books for two hours, it, the rent, the bike is unavailable for two hours and 15 minutes or however you configure it. So we have a very, uh, it's one of the more recent parts of the product is the, the rental product, but that's- But, but it's, in, it's from Peak or you use another it's, software? No, it's in Peak. It's basically, um, it's, it all looks the same, but it's, you'll see it in the product. It's slightly separated because just the way you think about your rentals products is simple. It's different from your tours, right? Your rentals can come in at any time. You need to check, you need to track when they come in, when they go out, who has the rental bike. A tour has a different setup where you have guides that need to be able to run it. You need to have what Michelle's mentioned, but sometimes you have buses that get shared between different tours. So they have different UIs. And so, and the way the data is managed under the hood is different. So they're, we treat them as slightly different products, but it's all within peak and it all works like point of sale. All of those things automatically work with both of them. So if a bike is already used for a bike rental, then it won't be available for a tour. That's coming. The, it's the <laughs> rentals product Perfect. is a new one, and we're working on getting the activities platform to on to, to use to Perfect. share those. But that's good because it, it is a need in the industry. <laughs> Oscar, for our listeners out there who want to find out more about Peak, how do they go about getting a demo? How do they go about interacting with Peak to 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 look at your uh, at your service and system? Um, I think the fastest way is through our website, peak.com slash pro. Um, so that is how you find the, that specifically has a lot of the details about Peak Pro uh, booking software. Um, and then you can link from the, yeah, you can link from there. I think there's, uh, there's, there's uh, different ways to reaching out. Yeah, cool. Emily, any final questions before we wrap up? Yes, just one last one. <laughs> uh, for the fees, um, I know that you said it was 6%. I guess that is online. But for the people walking in and also, um, let's say, the point of sale, uh, the yeah POS that you offer, is it still 6% or you have another fee you charge? We typically don't charge a fee on that. We only charge, the, obviously, the credit card transaction fee. We still have to charge because that's what we get charged and we just pass that on but there's no additional okay. fees typically. Okay, and how do you do the, the payment? Do we get the uh, payment of, you know, the money that came in right away or every two weeks or every month? How do you work? Um, it comes into us. It takes like about a day to settle, like for the credit cards to basically send us the money. And when we have it, then we trigger the payment. Um, and so I think overall there's like, two days to three days delay up from payment until it shows up in account. And then there's obviously weekends take longer and all of that, but yeah. Um, so it's regular, but it's yes. Every day you should get a payment every day, right? If you have okay. ongoing bookings. Very good. Thank you very much. Michelle picking a booking platform for tour operators and for our listeners, it can be very overwhelming. It's one of the biggest decisions we have to make for our business. What would you say to operators out there now who are listening to the tourpreneur podcast who may be considering looking at peak, what would your final words of advice be to our listener? You have to do it. Just do it. Just pick peak. Honestly, I mean, I've been in this, I, I've even, you know, my husband and I, we started off building websites. I mean, I've been in this space and there's just nothing better. I, it's just with the conversions and the ease of use and the support that you get, it's, it's just, it works don't hesitate to go with peak and don't hesitate to book your guided tour in miami at miami tourcompany.com correct correct <laughs> marvelous well well i know all three of you are very very busy so i appreciate you coming on today and sharing your experience and your wisdom with us thank you michelle moore feeling dank oscar bruning and messi buku emily of cyclo services <laughs> it's a pleasure c'est un plaisir <laughs>